Welcome back, Joystick Justice League, to the debut episode of our new central show, JJL Live, where I, Mike Furzios, every weekend cover the best headlines of the week. This episode's a bit special. Not only was it like two months in the making, and some of this news is maybe a couple weeks old or whatever, but we're getting caught up, getting back into a groove. I mean, it took me long enough just to get back on camera and start talking in front of it again, so you know, bear with me here. But as we get into like a weekly groove, we're gonna stay on top of the weekly news. So let's focus on Microsoft, what they're doing right, what they're doing wrong, get up to speed with what, what's been going down the last couple of months. Firstly, uh, big news for holidays, you know, now that they've got some killer exclusives like the Master Chief Collection and Sunset Overdrive, of course, Xbox lot, X, the Xbox One bundles and standalones are all dropping temporarily till January 3rd by $50. Now, people are mixed on this, how much of a positive effect it's gonna have, I don't know, you know, it, like I think the Xbox brand is still stronger than a lot of people give it credit for. I mean, people still have their live networks, are still enticed to get the games. And really, I mean, with all the all the click baiting and fear mongering over resolution and frame rates that goes back and forth about, you know, Xbox One games not looking as nice uh, as the PS4 counterparts in, in terms of where the third party games stand, I don't see the consumer caring. I see people buying uh, versions of Destiny for Xbox One and PS4. You know, yeah, the PS4 is doing better sales-wise, but the Xbox One is slowly catching up, and it has the momentum of the holiday season to use Master Chief Collection and Sunset Overdrive to their advantage to maybe start catching up a little bit. But the other part of me says that 50 bucks, well, the damage has been done. I, 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 I still see a lot of the bad press that Microsoft got over the last year coming back to haunt them, the, the whole no DRM thing, the, the this kind of snotty, dismissive attitude they still harbor towards indies. And I mean, wow, this sweet list could completely turn sour, but let's be honest here, uh, I'm not impressed with a lot of the things that still aren't being addressed. I mean, I recently read that Phil Spencer is still defending the parody clause for, it, for when he was on the Inner Circle podcast there. Um, I, I gotta switch gears here because I mean, really, let's 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 talk about the reality of this price drop. You know, people aren't stupid. People follow some type of gaming trade anywhere. Like more and more, even non-gaming sites are covering gaming news, like the International Business Times, Reuters. So the, the news gets out there quicker than it ever did before. And when they're still defending this whole dumb parity clause, whereby if an indie game decides, an indie developer, sorry, decides to release their game on the PlayStation or the Wii before they do it on the Xbox One that they can't do it all of a sudden. It has to either come out on all platforms at the same time or Xbox first and then they can review this on a case by case basis. It's no surprise that you're gonna get like the developers of Titan Souls saying that Sony is our preferred platform. We just like, and I'd say, like I said earlier uh, in the show, I believe that uh, Devolver Digital as a whole has pretty much taken a pro Sony anti Xbox stance from the beginning and that's really gonna hurt Xbox in the long run that a lot of these indies are favoring Sony over Xbox not all of them. I mean double fine is kind of taking an either-or stance You know doing certain games for Xbox certain games for PlayStation, but um, I think just again like you know bad press can stick for a long time and, and you know it's it's great that Master Chief Collection it is a hot property right now. You know, it's it's obviously got a few online issues this week, which will be patched. So stop believing all the haters who say, "Oh, it's it's fucked and it's it's." I'm sorry, I didn't mean to swear there. I'm probably gonna beat that out later. Maybe leave it. I don't know. Um, it's still a remastered collection of last gen games. Let's 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 get past the hype here. Really, I mean, it's not like a new IP. It's just a better looking version of of something everybody's had before. So I just, I, I, I see it selling consoles, but I don't see it being that, that crown jewel. I don't know. I, I, I want it, but it still isn't enough to plunk down $500 for another console and pay for a subscription service. So I, I hope that turns around because it really the, the, the whole major pain in my butt about Microsoft for like the last decade has been their their willingness to devote time and energy to stupid things like timed exclusives and, and DLC and and especially w with Call of Duty Last Gen when they wasted so much money on getting that on that timed exclusive content DLC for Call of Duty whereas Sony was spending its time and resources much like Nintendo is now on fostering its developers and its talent 
and developing franchises that would carry them into the next generation. That's what Sony did right. That's what Microsoft did wrong. And now it's showing. You know, it's like, yes, they have all the third-party games at maybe a slightly lower resolution than the PS4 does, and that's great. But in terms of exclusives, when the gate starts to open, the floodgates start to open for Sony next year, Microsoft's going to be in trouble because not only do you have Uncharted, but you've got Ratchet & Clank making a reappearance, God of War, which I know is going to get announced at some point. Gran Turismo, you've got all these other franchises that they can mine, you know, that, 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 that have been in place since the days of PS2, PS3, where again, last gen, it wasn't so much about franchises with Xbox, but it was about the whole experience, and I think that's where you're seeing them lacking right now. So, $50 price cut, is it going to move consoles? I hope so. I'd like to see things catch up. I'd like to see this be a neck and neck generation. But, uh, you know, let's get back to some good stuff. Um, 343 is taking advantage of the of basically the boon of esports and now has actually created their own Halo Championship Series or HCS for short which is actually the first developer run league in association with Twitch, ESL and Microsoft. The initial focus is going to be on Halo 2 but they've already promised that more of the, I believe more of the Master Chief Collection will be available in addition to Halo 5 and they've already announced Halo 6. So yeah like is the Microsoft, is the Xbox becoming a niche console? Are they banking too much on, on Master Chief? I, I know he has a following, but I'm just wondering it, how much more relevant Halo's gonna be in the face of Destiny 2 and the new mechanics of Call of Duty Advanced Warfare and, and the impending Titanfall 2, which I know is gonna get announced, which is most likely gonna go multi-plat now because EA now owns the Titanfall license. I, I hope they can really innovate. Already, like, early reports are, like, from, like, I was listening to podcast on Locked earlier today. Ryan McCaffrey was mentioning that Halo 5 isn't playing so hot. It's not feeling that great. Again, it's very early in development, but you'd expect they, that they would try to at least get something better out the door. I don't know. Well, you know, it, it, it doesn't matter. You know, Halo is Halo. It's always going to sell consoles. And, and copies what they really need to focus on in 2015 is starting to nurture more second party relationships and getting more and getting rid of that damn parody clause to try to entice indies and really going full blown like indies i've said this so many times before indies represent the next generation like they are going to be the next naughty dog they are going to be the next bioware the, the some of the indies we're playing these like these lower scale games we're playing now these, these people are going to be making the next AAA. So you, you have to start developing good relationships. And, and I want to see Phil Spencer start to fight back against this whole parody clause. I, I think he's got to abolish that and really open the floodgates and, and try to create a more responsive attitude. And, and like I said, I think both companies, both Sony and Xbox, need to get over this DLC war. They need to stop going for like exclusive DLC, exclusive content, time exclusives, and just start fostering talent. That That's really the major thing I wanna see. Uh, what else can we, we're kinda gonna, we're gonna wrap up Xbox in about a minute or so here. What else can we talk about? Um, it's official, Mojang is now officially owned by Microsoft. The 2.5 billion bio is complete. Um, basically they're saying, Microsoft is saying that the cloud service will in, enhance the Minecraft experience. My only issue, again, always being trying to be a devil's advocate, I try to look at things from both sides. It's great. Now you're going to have that Microsoft money being injected into the Minecraft franchise, which I think can has already survived long enough without Notch's presence. You know, people like to assume that Notch has been there for the whole ride, but he's, he's slow. Like, even before he retired from Mojang, he was doing less and less as, like, 4J was doing more and more. And, and I mean, it's it's it remains to be seen whether they can make like say like I know they're they're all signs are pointing towards a Minecraft two. I think that's what's gonna logically happen. But when you take the figurehead away from the franchise, Notch Mark Mark's person, is it gonna be the same? Is it gonna have the same soul that the first Minecraft has? Because I I do believe in the auteur theory. I'm a film student, so I do believe that that the work has some is some is in some way a reflection of the artist itself and, and that and that's the thing like when you really get into the deep philosophies of what makes minecraft so incredibly appealing 
it, it has to when you when you when you when you listen to Notch speak, when you follow him, and you hear his philosophies on life, you can see those playing out. And, and it's not it's no more blatant than when you actually um, my nephew showed me this, Eli. Um, when you actually go into create mode and you fight the Ender Dragon, you finish it. It has this prolonged end credit sequence where it's kind of giving you like this Zen philosophy of how to live life and how Minecraft all relates to that. So. The other thing that's on everybody's minds is how does this work now that Minecraft is on PlayStation Vita, PS3, and PS4? Is this going to affect this going to other platforms? Is it going to become an Xbox exclusive and a PC exclusive? Right now they're saying no, but at the same time they're saying Sony can do whatever it wants. So it almost seems, I'm not trying to make any wild predictions, but it's going to seem like I think Sony's going to have to start paying some big bucks to Microsoft if they ever want to see any further updates for Minecraft or to see it expand above where it is now. I don't know. It'll be interesting to see. We run out of time for the uh, Microsoft part of this. Um, stay tuned for the final segment. We're going to try to wrap up the show. Uh, we've gone a little bit long, so I may have to cut down my third party discussion to about five minutes. But uh, stay tuned for that. That'll wrap up uh, this debut episode of JJL Live, the new uh, video game news and reviews and radio, radio style program that is going to be the new direction going forward. I'm Mike Friesio. Stay tuned. We'll be uh, back soon.